Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. This week we've got ourselves a new app, plus some new tyres, and not to mention a collaboration between Hope Technology and Lotus Engineering. And also, we discuss exactly what you want to see in the future. Let's go! Oh, it's just me. Right, you'll remember last week, Ollie and I, we got imaginative, we put our thinking hats on, and we discussed what we would like to see in the future. And well, we didn't want to leave you lot out, so we asked you too to put on your thinking hats or maybe your thinking helmets, whichever way you're inclined, and to get involved in the comments section. And you did. In your droves. Believe me, I've been going through those comments for near on a week now, and I'm going to go through some of my favourites. There were plenty to choose from. First up, Ed R. CVTs with fully automatic shifting. For me, it's not something for the future. I've already done it. As far as I know, nobody else has. Continuously variable transmission. I like your thinking there. Uh, a couple of pulleys, a belt, a planetary gear system. What could possibly go wrong? Hmm. Anyway, let us know about the one you've done, Ed, because that sounds pretty amazing to me. Uh, right, Gringoling. I've got to wonder, where on earth do you lot get your usernames from to Gringoling? I mean, it's a quite a nice looking little avatar there too. Anyway, right, this isn't about your avatar, but let us know where that name's come from. Uh, 3D printed shoes, since you can't make them at home. Yeah, why not? I mean, if you've got if you've got the machinery to be able to do that, a 3D printer, you know, additive manufacturing, and you could do that, that would be brilliant because, well, you would have your very own pair of shoes custom to your feet if you've got bunions, for instance, or any sort of oddformities on your feet. I like the idea of that a lot. I just don't know how you would go about even starting it. Maybe one for me to ask Adam Hansen in the future. Uh, Tiberius Moon. How about a universal disc brakes uh, pad standard instead of having thousands of different types? Yes, I agree. If ever you've tried to find one on a Saturday afternoon at five to five, just before your local bike shop closes, normally they don't have it. Uh, something else I'd like to see actually integrated into that, or well, not into the pad, but also a universal part to suit all different bikes would be the derailleur hanger, believe me. that can be an absolute nightmare too. Please, someone just make it a standard. This is what we're gonna do. If you break the rules, we won't bother stocking your bikes. Or maybe not, it's just me getting a bit over-enthusiastic about this. Uh, Glenn Keller just did the calculation, and even using 11-speed spacing and a slight lenticular shape, there is plenty of room for 15 speeds. Lol. All oh, right, well then Ollie might get his million-speed uh, drive system. I really hope not. 15 speed would be absolutely overkill, I reckon. No doubt it will come though at some point anyway. And after all, we've got roll off and I think that's 14 speed, isn't it? Uh, Aaron Robertson, heated handlebars or heated tape for those of us in the northern climates. It would be wonderful. Yes, that sounds like an absolute dream for those winter rides when your fingers get ever so cold. But what about this then, if you could also have a cooling tape too, so that when you're riding in those hot summer climbs and you're sweating from everywhere, you could sweat, including your ears, that does happen, uh, you could just be cooled down slightly by your hands. I like the thought of that too. Okay, uh, Gary Wilton, my tech wish. One bottom bracket standard to rule them all. Oh yes, this old chestnut. I'm not gonna open up that can of worms today because I'd like to also have Ollie or James or Chris here to share the blame uh, for all of you lot out there when you say that every other bottom bracket standard is just as good, when to be honest, they are just as good anyway. But yeah, one bottom bracket standard would be good, let's face it, but then where would innovation come from? Leave that one with you, Gary. Or Jerry even, Jerry. Right then, here we are, Vincent Houlette, or maybe Vincent Ouliet, depending on where you come from. Uh, remotely controlled tyre pressure. Vincent said he would especially love this on uh, their gravel bike and fat bike because a few PSI can make a whole difference when riding on varied terrain. It's never pleasant to dismount to pump or release air. Perhaps it could be controlled by the rigidity of the tyre casing rather than actual air volume. Imagine the tyre in a thread could soften hard and based on electric currents like a muscle fibre. Vincent, that is probably the most outrageous comment we had actually about the thinking process behind it, but I love it though. Uh, right, SAF1981. Oh dear SAF, it looks like you've been uh, having a few too many Smarties, I think. Tron bike, a Power Ranger skin suit for full aero benefit, bike paint that changes colour in heat, cold or rain. Ah, Specialised already did that one at the Rio Olympics. 
Uh, adjustable bars, width ways. <laughs> Maybe that's to try and get through traffic, don't know. Um, rims that make the fast noise meow, once you hit 45k per hour. Right, well, let's just go through these, right? One and two, the Tron Bike Power Ranger skin suit. Yep, combine that. Yeah, chuck in number three as well. As for the others, yeah, why not? We'll, we'll just do that this afternoon. Okay, uh, seductive. I just want a bike that doesn't make noises and have to spend hours tracking down <laughs> and attempting to fix. Yeah. Uh, okay, one equals zero dot nine 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 nine. Repeating. They want electromagnetic wheels with rims that float on magnetic fields around e hubs, driven by small batteries in a seat tube and needing charge every other month or so. Blimey. Okay, Victoria Randall would like to see a lightweight race saddle for women. Uh, one that is actually comfortable for women. Maybe that is pushing the envelope too far. I've got to agree with you there, Victoria. Uh, most women's saddles we tend to see tend to be quite large. And most racing cyclists who are female, they tend to always want something slimmer down and a bit more lightweight. Okay, and finally, Mr. Grumpy 53 lives up to his username, a very regular commenter on every single GCN tech video. Uh, in the future, bikes will be so complex, all work will have to be done on it by a mechanic. Just like cars have changed over the years to be so complex that the term shade tree mechanic has disappeared. I've never actually heard of that term. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if in 10 years you'll have to take your bike in to have the tires changed because they will be run flat, tubeless, and self-inflating. Yeah, Mr. Grumpy. You are certainly living up to your username. Yeah, action. John? Yeah? Action. Yeah, I am, I'm working, mate, because hot tech news now. Yeah, that's right, GCN have launched an app. So go ahead and download it. There's versions for both iOS and also Android. The Android one is currently in its beta stage, like a testing sort of protocol. Go on, download it. Yeah, you've done it, good. Right, okay, open it up because we've got a section on there called Hot or Not. Now, it's just one of the many different features on there. And the great thing about that is that you at home, from the comfort of your sofa, the bus, wherever you are, you can just rate products on there, whether or not they're hot or not, and get involved with plenty of other features too, including, yes, that's right, the Bike Vault. And I've just actually submitted my very own. So go ahead and vote it either nice or super nice. I'm very worried now because you lot are, Quite a critique bunch, but anyway, do get involved with that because there's loads more great functions to come on that app. Right, it's a very sad time of year right now because, well for me, I think it is anyway, because the clocks are about to go back this weekend. And what does that mean? Well, it means that the evenings get darker even sooner, but there is a product that has just reached its Kickstarter funding target, just like that hybrid catamaran type e-bike thing last week as well. These are the Flector 360 wings. So the Flector 360s are a minimalistic decal or decal-like sticker which are adhesive onto your rims. Now the reason they put them on the rims is apparently you get a 360 degree coverage when the wheels are spinning along. And also the fact your wheels are always turning when you're riding mean that these are always gonna be in the eye of any other road users too. They also come in a variety of different colors too. And I guess if you're really into your aerodynamics too, they're more aerodynamic than the plasticky ones that would normally stick onto the actual spokes. It's great to see products like this absolutely smashing their funding targets because, well, I love a crowdfunder after all. Right, news literally just landed is that Hope Technology, who are a UK based company who make all sorts of bling for your bike, have partnered up or collaborated with Lotus Engineering. That's right, Lotus, those of the Lotus bike fame that I'm absolutely in love with. And if you've not heard about that, then you've bound to have seen the Spy Who Loved Me, the car under the water, and Roger Moore. Yeah, you know it. Right, but I don't actually know anything more about the actual collaboration as of yet. But I'm gonna keep my eyes peeled and report back as soon as I do. I'm excited, you're gonna be excited too, let's face it, because these two companies, who knows what's gonna be created. Right, and finally then, in hot new tech is news that Veloflex have launched a new range of clincher tires that incorporate something called SPS, which stands for Sidewall Protection System. So what this is, is kind of like a reinforced sidewall on their open tubular tires, which of course course do have that cotton casing. Now the reason they've done this is that some carbon rims uh, are really highly polished during the manufacturing process and aren't necessarily that blunt if you like. I mean they're not really sharp that you can cut your finger but what can happen in sort of very exceptional circumstances I guess is that the uh, sidewalls of the tyres can wear away 
during slight movements, so during cornering, that kind of thing, and well, render them useless because I guess you could eventually actually wear through the sidewalls. But it's great to see this sort of preventative measure taking place. Well done. Right, good news now because we have got a winner to announce for that Park Tool event kit and workstand unboxing that I did a couple of weeks back on the GCN Tech channel. And the good news is, if your name is Arne Callens and you're from Belgium, well done. Proficiat Jongen, you have just won a tool kit and a workstand. How lucky are you? Because I entered hundreds of times. Nice one, we'll be in touch very shortly. <laughs> Right, now time for screw riding upgrades by upgrades, where you submit before and after photos, videos, evidence, whatever you want to do using the app. That's right, yeah. You can use that brand new app that you've already downloaded. Don't bother with that old fashioned upload at all. Instead, go ahead, use it on your smartphone right now and send us in the pictures. But why would you want to do that? You may well ask. Well, the reason being, you could win a mystery prize. And I'm not sure if we're going to announce it just yet, exactly what it is you could win, but we do have a winner to announce. And the winner from last week's competition, it was an all Danish affair between Lasse and Jeppe. And believe me, it was so close. Actually, I'm watching the live results right now because there is literally nothing in it. So we're going to have to run with this right now. There is 0.5 of a percent in it. And well, Jeppe, that bike you restored for your sister, that one. Get in touch with us, mate, on Facebook, and we can arrange delivery of that mystery prize. With no further ado, let's go on to this week's contenders. Right, first up is Kev from Cleethorpes. Uh, now, Kev bought a Genesis flyer on eBay for £78 to do Land's End to John O'Groats on in 2017. Right, so that's from one end of Great Britain all the way up to the other on a single speed. I doff my cap. Uh, right, anyway, Kev decided to replace the fork with a lime green carbon one before the jog. Uh, the bike always looked a bit tatty, so Kev gave it a new paint job with spray dot bike paint. Also, some new Factory 5 pista wheels and crank set. Some Nitto handlebars, stem and seat post, a gold KMC gold uh, chain, a Cane Creek headset, and most importantly, a GCN cap for the headset. It was meant to be Kev's winter trainer, but looks too pretty now. Right, there's the old white thing, the Genesis, in front of a cabbage patch field or something like that. There it is there with its rather odd looking green fork in front of a very nice wall. I do like that. I do like that indeed. Uh, blimey, Kev. That is a really nice sunset. It's like a te tequila sunrise, I think they call that sort of paint finish. You've done brilliant work, mate. Nice pier in the background too. That wall, quite not quite as nice as the previous one. There's a bit of moss growing on it. It's looking a bit mouldy. But that bike, mate, you've made it look so, so good. I mean, you've upgraded the chain set on there too. You put a different ring on there. I mean, if you're riding Land's End John O'Groats, mate, you're gonna need, you know, an easier gear, I reckon, than what was originally on it. Uh, either way, absolutely beautiful upgrade. But Kev, you're not gonna have it easy this, this week, my friend. Uh, you're up against Graham from Edmonton in Canada. Graham's previous bike was stolen, never good news. Uh, but he laid his eyes on uh, the Iron Horse Desperado and it spoke to him. It's a bit weird this. Uh, suspension forks and burly 26 inch wheels for about 500 Canadian dollars. It was a perfect fit. Uh, Graham's interest expanded from mountain biking to road and gravel and he began to desire a drop bar bike. Well done, welcome to the club. Uh, something agile and fast that he could use as a commuter to get to the pub or even to take adventure riding if the mood suited. Enter Bonk, named for Graham's athletic prowess. Of course, Bonk is uh, a term which you use when you absolutely hit the wall, when you run out of energy and you've got nothing more, you bonk on the bicycle. Uh, now, with the help of Bike Edmonton, the local volunteer shop, Graham cobbled together the majority of the parts for about 100 Canadian dollars. Parts included the 400 mil axle to crown fork with low spoke 700C front wheel to maintain the geometry after losing the suspension fork. Tetro cantilever brakes, Shimano RX100 cranks. That was always a really good group set, actually. Offered sort of great value for money. Uh, anyway, a combination of Dura Ace and Tiagra shifters and an 11 to 36 cassette. All in all, Bonk was born for under 300 Canadian bucks. Now, Graham has heard these referred to as 69ers for their 26 inch rear and 29 inch front. But whatever you want to call it, it's a pleasure to ride and has given the Iron Horse a place of pride 
back in the roster. Right, so a little look through then. There is the old Iron Horse Desperado. Yeah, and there it is. That looks like the old Edmonton, uh, Edmonton, well, the bike Edmonton, the bike uh, volunteer place in the background there. When he's, oh, I like that rock hopper too. That teal coloured one. Anyway, this is all about the Iron Horse, the Desperado. There's those shifters, Tiagra and a Dura Ace. There's a Bonk logo. Blimey, there it is, finished up. It's an interesting looking bike. It looks like the top tube has dropped and then sort of intercepted on the seat stays, but that's what mountain bikes are, I guess, sometimes. Uh, it looks great. I love the fact it looks so funny because you've got that 29, <laughs> 29 inch front wheel, 700 front wheel, and a 26 on the back. Uh, it, 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 all, it all looks like it's been in a bit of an accident, but it's, but it works really well. I like the saddle too. I don't know who's it gonna be though. Is it gonna be Graham and Bonk or is it gonna be Kev and the Genesis? You decide, vote up there, top right hand corner. And remember, use the app and upload to buy upgrades to stand a chance of winning a mystery prize. <sighs> Calm yourself, it's the bike vault. The part of the show which everybody absolutely loves. But what exactly is it? Well, we look at your bikes and we rate them either nice or super nice. But how do we get to see them? Huh, hello. You use the app and you use the uploader built within it to actually submit them to us. And the good news is it also goes onto the app so that everybody else can rate them nice or super nice too. Which means that me, Ollie, Chris, James, Side Dan, we can all get in a lot of hot water if we go against the grain of what's being voted for. Either way, use that app, upload them, and well, if you get super nice, this gets rung. And I've got to say, actually, I spent about 25 minutes looking for this earlier on, and I found it. Ollie was keeping it safe for me. It was in a refuse bag underneath his desk. He must have just been making sure it didn't get dirty or anything like that. He's a nice lad. Right, okay. First submission this week comes in from Justin in Boca Raton in Florida. I've probably got all of that wrong, apart from Justin in Florida. Uh, it's a Cervelo R3. It's got a, oh, I'm led to believe that's a vinyl top tube. Obviously it's not an actual vinyl top tube, it's just been wrapped in gold, which looks absolutely bling with the gold chain and gold bar end plugs. Uh, what else we got though? Vision integrated bar and stem, FSA seat post. Quite a lot of pin out there, a big old saddle to bar drop. It's a, it's a lovely looking bike there. Looks like it's, it's got a rotor, power meter and Q rings. Saddle bag on there, mm, could have taken it off, but it doesn't distract totally. What's distracting me a little bit is the fact, Justin, you've done this on sand. So it's not the best for your drive train, but well, you've risked it for a biscuit. So I'm gonna give you a super nice bike. Yeah, thin ice. Thin ice indeed. I don't think Ollie would have given that. Anyway, right, Holger in Oldenwald near uh, Herskorn and Heidelberg in Germany. Oh, beauty. De Rosa SK Pinaferina Luxury Edition. That, I love it. Everything about it. All right, it's got a monstrous bottle in there, but I, I, I can see past that. I can see low clouds in the background. I can see Campagnolo Bora Ultra wheels, or Bora One, sorry, wheels. Oh, it's an absolute joy to behold. That, that, that is beautiful. That blue, yeah, super nice. Right, next up is Christopher, uh, who's on the front beach, Torquay, Victoria, Australia. Oh, I've never been to Victoria in Australia. Happily go along though, Christopher, if you sent me a ticket, mate. Hopefully, actually, I'll be going down to the Torland Under again in early 2022, so I could combine the two trips, I could come and stay for a while. Anyway, right, this is Christopher's Olmo Giro from 1998. Tell you what, Christopher, that looks older than 1998, just because, I don't know, 1998 doesn't seem that long ago, but the bike looks really old. Uh, anyway, well, it's still 20 years, 21 years ago. Uh, steel tubes, obviously, we've got an elite QSC bottle cage, we've got sort of chrome ends on the, on the rear end there, on the chain stays and seat stays, chrome forks, Beautiful stem. I reckon that's a Chinelli, I think they're called Pinocchio or something like that. Or is it Grammo Pinocchio? Because they have that little red bit on the top. And they said it looked like Pinocchio's nose, I think, in the advertisements. Uh, flight titanium saddle, one of the original ones. Gold chain. Uh, could well be KMC, could well be a Sax Sedis or even the Sedis Gold, or even a Regina or Regina. Uh, they were absolute beauties. Mr. Grumpy 53, I'm sure you'll know. Uh, right, we've got white sidewall tires. They don't look like gum or tan, they just look like white, which 
there could well be Michelin. Either way, absolutely beautiful bike, but I reckon you could have got an even better backdrop, mate. You're in Australia, you know, you've got these golden beaches, absolutely beautiful. Just move it over to the side a little bit and it would have got super nice. Nice, resubmit it using the app and you'll probably get super nice. Okay, Jonathan in Forest Park, Portland, Oregon. This is the Trek Checkpoint bike. Well, I can't see the bike for the trees. <laughs> uh, love it. It's really well done. You've captured everything about that off-road gravel adventure there. Uh, the bike probably not quite as close as what we'd normally like, but I think just the beauty and how jealous I feel from seeing this is, uh, is earned you a super nice. Well done, my friend. Right, and the final one is Corey in uh, Llanarthi, or uh, Llanarthni in uh, Carmarthenshire in Wales. It's a giant Propel Advance Pro 2, which is a really nice looking bike there. Uh, but hang on a minute, that's Paxton's Tower in the background. That's the neo-gothic folly erected in honour of Lord Nelson and took approximately three years to build in between, I think from memory, 1806 and 1809. Now it stands at 36 feet high, so just under 11 metres in the metric system. Now one of the most impressive features actually about the uh, Paxton's Tower is the fact that the lower part of the tower is triangular in shape with a turret at each corner and not forgetting the banquet room on the first floor. Now on the second floor, there's a hexagonal prospect room surrounded by roof terraces, and landmarks like these often aren't uh, seen as a visitor attraction as such, but head on over to Carmarthenshire in Wales and you can. And well, it's nice or super nice, anything to do with Lord Nelson gets a super nice for me. More Bike Vault next week. There we are, another GCN Tech Show in the bag. Remember as well to like and share this with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to the GCN Tech channel and also click that little notification icon so you get alerted each and every time we put a video live. And remember to check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com where we've got a whole heap of stuff for you to check out. And now for two more great videos, how about clicking just down here and just down here and next week normal service will be resumed. There'll be two of us. Oh yes.